I'd like to read from the uh, English Standard Version, uh, Habakkuk chapter 2. Uh, I'm going to begin in verse 2. Uh, the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed times. There'll be nothing, the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. To be nothing, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Father, we thank you, God, once again for the anointing upon the Word of God. I pray that your Word would go forth tonight, create faith in our hearts. God, you said in your Word that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. Lord, I'm asking for that anointing that brings faith to the hearts of your people, that you would restore hope where hope has been lost, that you will restore vision where vision has been lost, that you will restore passion where passion has been lost. God, I'm looking to you, Holy Spirit of God, God, that you would speak to hearts tonight, that you would revive, Lord, your vision, revive your people tonight through the power of your word. God, I thank you that you want to do something fresh, something new in and through us tonight. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You know, some uh, several thousand years ago, God made a promise to Abraham. Somebody say, Abraham. God made a promise to Abraham and to his seed, to the descendants of Abraham, to the nation of Israel, that God would greatly increase, I mean, I think greatly increase, that God would greatly increase their numbers, that God would give them a place that they can call their own, that God would give them even towns, even sitting, even houses that they did not build themselves, that God would provide for them a land of promise, a land of abundance, a land flowing with milk and honey. God made a promise to Abraham and to his seed. That promise was passed down from generation to generation to generation. They would sit around the campfires and they would talk about the promise that God had made uh, to their great-grandfather Abraham and to his seed. For generation after generation, they passed down the vision that God had given their forefather Abraham. The Lord took Abraham, as you well know, out of the tent told him to look at the stars of the sky, to look at the sand on the seashore in order to impart visions. I mean, I think vision. Vision is a mental picture of what the future will become. So God made a promise to Abraham and to his seed to greatly multiply them. God made a promise to Abraham and to his descendants that he would give them a land of their own, a land of abundance, a land of promise. And God put a vision in the heart of Abraham by showing him a mental picture of what the future was going to look like. But how many of you know the promise of God, the fulfillment of that promise, hindi ho nangyari agad agad. In fact, they went through many trials and tribulations, many ups and downs, many failures and successes. I want you to just think with me here tonight the numbers of things that had to happen or that happened before the fulfillment. I mean, it's in fulfillment. Before the fulfillment of the promise, I'm just going to run through some of these things quickly, but I want you to just meditate with me or just think about some of the things that happened before that vision ever came to pass, the fulfillment of that promise. Of course, we know that Abraham gave, uh, uh, had a son uh, named Ishmael, which was kind of a mistake. Uh, we know that, that on, on at least two occasions he lied about his own wife, Sarah. Uh, we know that uh, Abraham had uh, an, another son, 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, we know that Esau and Jacob ha- had a had a falling out, and they uh, Jacob had to wrestle with the angel of God until God changed his heart. Uh, we know the story of Leah and Rebecca and Laban, and, and that whole mess that, that that was that that was. We know the story of Joseph, his brothers selling him into slavery. We know the story of Moses and Aaron and Miriam, the ten plagues that came upon Egypt, the golden calf, Israel repeated rebellion we know the story of the ten spies of Joshua Caleb Jericho Rahab the harlot Israel's wilderness wanderings Uh, we know that they were defeated at Ai we know the story of Balak and Balaam and Deborah and Barak and Naomi and Ruth and Gideon and Samson and, and, and King Saul we know all of these stories of the ups and downs, the problems, the trials, the failures and successes that many of these men of God went through until finally in the time of King David and Solomon, they begin to see the real promise fulfilled. Are you here tonight? What's my point? My point is this, the promise of God, the vision of God, though God is perfect, though his word is perfect, though the things that he speaks are perfect, the people that he's working with are not perfect. And it takes time. And there are, tr- it's never easy. So make it to be, it's never easy. What a mistake to think, na porke pangako ng Panginoon, madali at mangyayari agad. I want you to think about it. Abraham failed miserably. The Israelites failed miserably. So many people in the Bible, they made mistakes. But but listen to me, listen to me. Before God ever made the promise, before he ever called them, before he ever communicated his vision, I mean, I think his vision, before he ever communicated his vision to Abraham, or to David, or to Moses, or to any of them, before he ever called any of them or communicated any of them, God already knew their weaknesses. God already knew that they would fail. God already knew the trials and tribulations, the ups and downs that they would go through, but he chose them anyway. Isn't that good news? That gives hope for you. That gives hope for me. Many years ago, God put a vision in our hearts. I believe it's a God-given vision. We've had our ups and downs. We've certainly made some mistakes. We've certainly had some failures. But I believe that God still has a vision and a plan and a future for this church and this organization. I believe it's God's plan. I believe it's God's vision. And I want to stir faith in your heart tonight. You know, the the, the one thing about the Israelites, though they failed miserably, rebelling against Moses, the the golden calf. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Uh, Even even David and his uh, committing adultery with Bathsheba and all these things that happened. Though Though they failed miserably, they never let go of the vision. You know that? Though they were in slavery, and, and, and surely 400 years in slavery, you would think it, it seems almost hopeless. It seems almost impossible that that vision would, would come to pass. But I can still, in my heart, in my mind, I can see them sitting around their little campfires at night and telling their children, and telling their children's children, Anak, darating na araw, nangako na Panginoon sa ating nanonok kay Abraham, kay Moises, kay... They, they, they sat around those fires and talked about the vision, the promise of God. There will come a day that God will give us a land of our own, a land of abundance, a land flowing with milk and honey. God will come a day that he will bless us and he will make us into a great and a mighty nation. Can you say amen? They never lost the dream. They never lost the vision. They pass it down from generation to generation to generation, literally hundreds of years, ups and downs in life, failures and successes. They never lost. They still believed. Though in many times they were in rebellion, oftentimes they failed miserably, still in their heart, 
they held on to that promise and they said, we believe in the God who has made this promise. Even though we have failed, even though our leaders have failed, even though we have made many mistakes, we still believe in the God who made the promise that he will one day bring it to pass. It will happen. Mangyayari. Because it came from God. It's his vision. And he knew in advance the weaknesses, the frailties of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Gideon, David. God knew in advance before he called them, while he called them, after he called them, after they failed, God still chose them anyway and still intended to fulfill his plan and his purpose in their life. Can somebody say amen? I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me. God's promise in his vision stayed in their hearts even though they had so many failures, so many weaknesses, so many mistakes. How is it that God, who is perfect, his word is perfect, his promises are perfect, his dreams and his vision for your life or my life is perfect? How many of you know God is perfect? He really is perfect. How is it that the God who is perfect, who has perfect promises, a perfect word, perfect, uh, perfect vision for our lives, yet we go through so many trials and tribulations, so many ups and downs, so many weaknesses and failures, because although God is perfect, you and I, we are not perfect. And so... The vision, the destiny, is oftentimes delayed because of our own imperfections. I'm talking about myself tonight. But how many of you know the failures of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Gideon, Samson? How many of you know? I mean, you read their stories. Some of them failed misery. How many of you know the failures of even these great men and leaders never negated the promise of God? It didn't stop the promise of God. Their failures did not stop God from fulfilling his plan and his purpose. I'm talking about you and me tonight. If God has put a word in your heart, if he has given you a dream, if he has given you a vision, your failures cannot stop, will not stop God from fulfilling his purpose in your life. Come on. He knew. God knew before he ever spoke to you, before he ever called you, before he ever revealed to you his plan and his purpose, God knew in advance that you would mess up, that I would mess up. God knew in advance your areas of weakness, my areas of weakness. God knew in advance, yet he chose to reveal his plan and his purpose to you anyway. With full knowledge of all of our weaknesses and failures. The failures of these men of God throughout the scripture and even our failures. This is not to make, don't misunderstand me. I'm not making an excuse for failures. What I am saying is that God already knows in advance his plans and his purposes will prevail. We must just believe. Come on, balaban al panginoon. Hopefully if we fail, we repent. We clean up the messes that we've made. I tell you, Abraham made some messes. David made some messes. Hopefully, if we fail, then we sincerely repent, clean up the messes we made, and then we get back to the vision, back to the dream, back to the thing that God has put in our heart. I believe Israel did that. Even with all of their failures, even with all of their rebellion, even having wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and many of them dying off and, and, and all the things that they went through, 
still there was something in their heart. God made us a promise. God made us a promise. Yes, we're weak. Yes, we've messed up. But God made us a promise. And they held on to the vision. They held on to the promise of God. I believe that God has given us a vision. I really believe that. I believe that God is the author of Victory Churches. I still believe that despite our weaknesses, despite our failures, despite our mistakes, and they are many, I still believe God fully intends to fulfill His promise and His purpose in and through us. I believe that He knew before, before this organization ever came into being, I believe God already knew the failures, the weaknesses, the mistakes that we would make. And yet, He chose to reveal His plan, His purpose, His vision to you and I. Can somebody say amen? It's a vision to plant hundreds of churches and send dozens of missionaries all around the world. The Scripture tells us that we are to write the vision down, and, and we've done that. We've written the vision down. I just want to read. You can find it in our membership, in our membership uh, manual. God told Habakkuk, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that he may run that reads it. And I just want to read uh, some portions from our membership, uh, our membership manual. And, and what you're going to see in this, this little manual that was written 15 years ago, uh, what you will see is that some of the things have already come to pass, and yet some of them have not yet come to pass. Our vision is to build a church of not less than 10,000 people, to plant not less than 20 new church planting churches in the Philippines within five years and 200 new churches within 25 years. Our vision is to become a cell-based church with not less than 400. I'm reading from the manual, our, our membership manual written some 15 years ago. To become a cell-based church with not less than 400 cell groups with the goal of 100% of our members being actively involved in a cell group. Our vision is to set up our own Bible school in order to train a multitude of full-time Christian workers to eventually own our own church building with an auditorium that will seat several thousand, to send and support dozens of Filipino missionaries who will plant churches throughout the least evangelized nations of Asia. Now, some of those things have actually come to pass. We've planted more than 20 churches. We have 35 churches now to the, by the grace of God. Palabana Panginoon. We haven't reached 200 yet, but we're not 25 years old yet either. We have a full-time Bible school. It's part of our vision. Uh, we don't quite have 400 care groups yet, but uh, we have 360 care groups right here in this church. Give the Lord a clap for that. So some of the things we've already seen, the progress we're already seeing God is fulfilling some of those things. Some of them have not yet happened. We don't have 10,000 members in this church. We don't yet have our own building. But just because the vision delays, tell your neighbor, look at your neighbor, and say, look him in the eye and say, don't give up the vision. Don't give up the vision. If it's a God-given vision, it will surely come to pass. It will surely come to pass. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean it will won't it doesn't mean it'll be immediate. Just like God's promise to Abraham, there will be ups and downs, trials and tribulations, failures and successes. There will be a lot of things that we go through before the vision comes to pass. But my prayer tonight is that 
you, would, you and I would be able to do what the Israelites did. That even after hundreds of years of waiting for God to fulfill His plan and His purpose, even after all the ups and downs, the failures, the failures and the successes, even after, and I'm sure that there were times, I mean, you know, when they were in slavery in Egypt, come on. <laughs> you know, they've got to be started to question, is that story really true? But even after all of those things, I can still hear them in my heart, in my spirit, in my spiritual ears. I can still hear the, the, the yung mga tatay, yung mga, yung mga uh, lolo at lola, kinekwento nila sa kalimang anak. Anak, God made a promise. God made a promise. God made a promise. He spoke to our forefathers, and there will come a day that that promise will come to pass. I pray that you would have that same spirit of faith. Despite your failures and your weaknesses, despite the failures and the weaknesses of your leaders, despite the ups and downs in life, I pray that in your heart, there will be something in your heart that will say, say in your heart, not only in your heart, but even say out, out loud, I know my God made a promise and it will surely come to pass. Someday it will come to pass because I believe it's from God. It's not just from a man. It's something that God spoke to us. I pray you'd have that same spirit of faith. That despite the weaknesses, despite the failures, God's promises will surely come to pass. If it's a God-given vision, it will surely come to pass. So what is, what is our, our part? You know, Victory Church is international. We have what we call the ten tenets. These are these are kind of a philosophy of how we, we strive to operate as an organization. One of those tenets, tenet four says, we purpose. We, don't think we purpose. We purpose to be continually renewed in our vision and our mind. So we, don't think we purpose. You know, that, 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 that phrase, we purpose, it, it speaks of we are intentionally, we, we, are, uh, we are making a, a, a solemn commitment. We purpose. It's not, something, it's not something that we're just wanting to happen. It's not something that we're just waiting to happen. When, when it says we purpose, that means we are making a solid commitment. We are making uh, intentionally, we are deciding in our hearts, we purpose to be continually renewed in our vision. Because how many of you know vision leaks? It's easy to have a vision on the mountaintop when everything is glorious. But when we're down in, in, in the depths, when everything is going wrong and things are not happening the way that we had hoped, the way that we'd expect it, it's easy to lose heart. It's easy to lose vision. And so we need, to, so be nothing, we purpose. So be nothing, I purpose. We have to purpose in our hearts, in our minds, to continually be renewed in the vision that God has given us, to continually be renewed in our minds, to hold to the promise of God, to hold to, to, to the word of God that he's, given, he's giving us a future and a hope. We have to be intentional. I mean, nothing intentional. We purpose to be continually renewed in our vision and in our mind. So what's our job then? What's our part? What is our attitude to be in light of these things? What is our attitude? Number one, we have to keep the vision alive just as the Israelites did. We have to keep that vision alive in our hearts. We have to continue to believe, continue to stir it up, 
continue to, to tell it to, to, our, uh, to, to those that are under us, to, even to our children. We have to keep that vision alive just like the Israelites did for hundreds of years. They kept the promise. They kept the vision alive. And then, uh, of course, we have to learn and, and, and correct the mistakes of, uh, of the past. It took Israel a long time, a long time to finally get rid of all idolatry. But if you go to Israel today, you won't find any Jews worshiping any idols. Nowhere in the world will you find a Jewish person worshiping an idol. But you read the Old Testament, how many of you know, multiple times they went back to idolatry. Hello. So we have, to, we have to learn from our mistakes. Of course, we have to repent, clean up the messes. But then when we've made a mistake, and I'm talking about myself. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about myself. When we've made a mistake, we have to repent, clean up our messes, and then pick up the vision again. Pick up the dream again. Talk about it. Share it. Believe it. Hold on to it. And then thirdly, we've got to hold on to our faith without wavering, and we've got to pursue that vision once again. So I don't know about you, but I, I, I despise mediocrity. I, I hate complacency. I have no desire whatsoever to retire in some uh, luxury seniors resort. I want to die on the battlefield advancing the kingdom of God. Uh, I want the Joshua and Caleb spirit that says even in his old age, give me this mountain. This is God's promise. This is God's plan. This is God's purpose. I will not stop. I will pursue the vision. Can you say amen? God has a plan. He has a purpose. He's called us together for a divine purpose. And I pray that we will have that passion, that faith in our hearts. Uh, without wavering, that we will pursue the vision once again. Yes, we make mistakes, and there are no excuses for those mistakes. But if we repent, clean up our messes, ask God's forgiveness, then we need to take hold of his promise again, take hold of the vision again. Because even, with, even as the nation of Israel, God's promise, his vision, through all the messes they made, all the ups and downs, his promise, his vision, continues to prevail so it is with you so it is with me God has a plan and a purpose for this organization with all of our frailties all of our weaknesses he still has that plan and that purpose I want to just share tonight uh, a couple of things that I really believe we need to focus in on as a church and as an organization. You know, John Maxwell, <clears throat> one of the foremost uh, teachers on, on the subject of leadership, really an expert, uh, I, I encourage you, uh, any, any and every book by John Maxwell is worth reading. Every page drips with wisdom about leadership. Uh, John Maxwell, in one of his books, says that every level of growth demands change. Let's say that together. Every level of growth demands change. Now, that's both personally and corporately. Significant change. If you want to grow, if I want to grow in my Christian life, if you want to grow, if I want to grow in, in my leadership, in, in, 
influence and being used by God, if this church is to grow, then it demands change. Somebody say change is good. But it's also painful, right? <laughs> you know, honestly, human nature, we don't really like to change. In human nature, we would prefer for things to remain the same because it's comfortable, it's familiar. But, but if there's going to be growth, it demands change. It demands change in my heart, in your heart, in my life, in your life, in my words, in my actions, in your words, in your actions. It demands change. And so if we're going to see the fulfillment of God's plan and purpose in our lives, there needs to be times of significant change. Catalyst times when, when, when there's changes that come. We need to embrace those changes. And so, just a couple of things we need to really focus in on as a church number one and, and I really want to make this a priority for the remainder of the year we have got to raise up new volunteers I mean nothing new volunteers there wasn't much in, much enthusiasm there <laughs> I know you guys love God I, I, you know there's no doubt in my mind you love the Lord. You serve Him with all of your heart. You love serving the Lord. And, and, and I commend that. I commend that. But it is not healthy. It is not healthy for many of our uh, volunteer workers to be involved in two, three, four, five ministries. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. And, and so if we want to grow, then we have got to change. We have got to raise up new volunteers and put them in some of those things that we're doing so that those of you who have been with us for a while, that then you can focus in on ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can focus in on making disciples. We have got to raise up new volunteers. There's no, no choice. If we want to grow, we are going to have to raise up an army of new volunteers. And so that takes some change. Something has to happen in order for us to reach our full potential as a church. We have got to focus more on our youth and on our children because our youth and the children, they are the future. And if we don't give a proper attention to our youth and our children, then we won't have a future. So there's got to come a, a shift in our church where we give more attention to our youth, more attention to our, to, to our children's ministries and our youth ministries. We've got to uh, reassess all of our programs and our policies. We have to ask ourselves the question, are they effective? Or are they necessary? How can we improve? How can we, uh, wh what can we eliminate? What do we need to add? So we've got to be constantly assessing and evaluating and, and we're doing that in many ways. Uh, but there's got to be significant change to many of these things. I, I recognize that. Uh, long term, I don't expect to do that this, this year. But long term, we have to think uh, uh, about increasing ministry to the poor, to the oppressed, to, to homosexuals, to drug addicts. We, we've got to build some solid, capable teams that start new ministries focused on, on some of these needs because these are reality. We have to focus on our finances because our finances aren't growing as a church. Our finances are stagnant, and that, that hinders us from putting on new staff. We, we've got to focus on gr growing our finances and then eventually to purchase some land and to have a building. I believe that's part of God's plan for our life, our plan for our church. So there are lots of things that still 
have yet to be done. Amen? But the vision never changes. It will wait for it, write it down, it will surely come to pass. Come on, palabang na Panginoon. It will. It will. Despite your weaknesses, despite my weaknesses, despite your mistakes, despite my mistakes, despite your failures, despite my failures, if it's a God-given vision, it will happen. And so I want to encourage you tonight, renew your vision. Renew your heart, renew your desire, renew your faith. And believe in, you, you don't have to believe in the leadership. Believe in the God who speaks. Believe in the promises of God. Believe that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. And, and so we're going to have communion tonight. And I want to challenge you. If you're a member here at, at VCA, I want to I wanna challenge you tonight as... We prepare ourselves for communion. I want to challenge you first and foremost to renew your commitment if you, to, to, to God's purpose and plan and vision for this church. If you're a believer here tonight and, and perhaps you're not a member of this church, maybe you're just visiting, I want to challenge you as well. Renew your commitment to the Great Commission. Because these are some of the last words of Jesus before he left planet earth. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Go and make disciples. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. His commission hasn't changed for several thousand years. It's still his vision. It's still his purpose. The manifold wisdom of God would be known through the church, Paul writes in Ephesians. So I want to encourage you to believe that God is doing something in your heart, in your life, in your church, whether you're a part of VCA or not. God has a plan. He has a purpose. The church of Jesus Christ will be a glorious bride before Jesus returns. Come on, Balaban, and on. It will happen. It will happen. No matter our weaknesses, our failures, our mistakes, God has a vision for His church, and it will come to pass. Amen. Amen.